Thanks for joining us. If you are still just joining us, you are still on the Polity Reaching Life from the nation's capital in Abuja. And with us in the studio now is um, an honorable, of course, uh, from one of the Northern Coalition. Um, with me in the studio is Honorable Barao Iliasu Gumani. I hope I pronounced that well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good afternoon. He's the Secretary National Coalition of APC 19, Northern Support Group. And of course, the FCT chapter. Welcome once again. Thank you. It's good much. to see you. All right. Um, um, there's been lots of back and forth on the polity about um, recent happenings in the APC. But then before we delve into that, I'd like us to talk about uh, um, President Bola Metunibu's 100 days in office. And of course, the major highlight is um, subsidy removal. Uh, the price per barrel has increased. And of course, price hasn't increased. That's one of the major highlights. And you know the president has come out to say there will not be any increase in the, the pump price anymore. So what is actually happening behind the scene? That's one. And two, I like to take everything together because we have limited time. No the hike in school fees. Of course, um, we have um, some school students currently protesting about the hike in school fees right now. Then labor going on strike because of the state of the economy. But before you answer all of these three questions, I'd like you to analyze our President Bola Mesinubu's 100 days in office. Thank you very much for giving me this um, a wonderful opportunity Thank you. to speak on our father, that is the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, okay. His Excellency President Bola Mesinubu. A man, a man of focus, okay. a man of determination. Um, God has reason for making him our president. And uh, I think by rating, Bola, President Ahmed Bola Tinubu is one of the best presidents so far that we ever had in Nigeria. If you look at the person in question, okay. he has done a lot of mapping and strategies before coming, even before vying for the position of presidency. Yes, right. So if you look at his past record, what he did in Lagos, he's mentoring a lot of um, uh, leaders. So it's not something of surprise that if he's doing all those things within a short period of time in Nigeria. That's why we know that people are in pain. But with time, everything is going to be easy. How long do you think people have to wait for before the pain is over? I think... Um, uh, within a short time, inshallah. And speaking about pain, um, some persons have actually said um, this pain we're talking about. I mean, the president himself said we should endure. But the these persons on the street have said um, you are telling citizens to endure. But the said politicians, are they bearing any um, pain? Is there anything that is actually affecting them right now, given that we the citizens have to endure, right? But then what are the politicians doing? What is their own take on all of this together? You see, when the, there's an idea that says if two elephants are fighting, mm -hmm. the grass suffer. So definitely, since our president is working tremendously to see that he fixed the economic of this Nigeria, if he can remember what, is, what has happened in the previous administration, okay. PDP and the Buhari administration, I think Buhari did so well. He did well. And with the coming of uh, Bola Matinibu, I think he's trying to build from what uh, former president, that is Muhammad Buhari, left. And that is why. Then most of these politicians, you know, they are, they are politicians, they are, they are showing their grievance just because, most especially the opposition, you. you understand, most especially the opposition. Yes, definitely, what do you expect them to do? Definitely, they have to come out and criticize because they are they are they are with uh, they are they are in the masses. So they are trying to they are trying to bring out some errors from this present administration, present administration. so that they can have charisma in the next elect uh, next uh, dispensation yes, that is sir. coming. So under uh, which I believe most Nigerians we are now we are now enlightened. You understand? We are now enlightening ourselves. We know what is happening. So, if you look at this uh, issue of uh, subsidy removal, when we said, uh, when Pere Muhammad uh, Bolatinubu said he's going to uh, remove this thing, even at the, uh, before his election in the campaign, he was saying that, I'm going to remove it. That's to show the, this man is a man of his words. And there are reasons of removing all those things. Definitely, uh, Nigeria economic is coming to stay. Okay. It's coming to stay. That is why many politicians, most especially the oppositions, they are trying to see if they can withdraw, they can set this, the, some of the achievement back for people. They are not covering the good aspect of this government. 
you understand, so that the masses will not be seeing the bad side of it. But in the real sense, what is happening today in this country, I believe within a shorter time, inshallah, we are going to have a very good ease, inshallah. Don't you think uh, what is happening under this administration is just um, a major, or uh, let's say a ripple effect of what is happened in the President Muhammad, or former President Muhammad Buhari's um, administration, speak of insecurity. I mean, you have said he has done well, but... Some other persons would um, disagree with it because I was going to ask that if you say he has done well, I'd like you to highlight, I mean, one or two um, sectors where he majorly did outrightly well. Okay, like uh, that is for President Muhammad Bari. President Bahari. Muhammad Bari. Um, the former president. Yeah, former president. Well, if you look at Nigerians today, mm -hmm. there are a lot of Nigerians that were sitting down ideal. That okay. is during PDP administration. Okay. But the coming of uh, former President Muhammad Buhari, right. a lot of youth have become so innovative. Let me give you an instant. In the past 10 to 15 years back, Nigerians depend on foreign rice. But today, we have our own parboiled and sorted rice in Nigeria that is, is even competing with the foreign rice. Is the, the coming of President Muhammad Buhari who has given an insight to the youth. And well, the last I heard of that rice, the only thing they did was launch a rice fund um, the, this thing, and that was the last anyone has heard about rice fund. Um, see, if you, uh, if you involve yourself into uh, marketing, and mm -hmm. if you go outside there, you mm -hmm. know what we are telling you. Okay. We don't just brag and come to media and say whatever we feel like. No. Okay. Whatever we are saying, there are proofs. There are proofs. Me, right. I, am a, I am a living example. Okay, all right. You understand? Mm -hmm. I produce rice. You understand? And it is a result of coming of President Muhammad Bar who gave us this license. You understand? And sense of belongings in order to expand our, uh, our source of income. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. They come to this uh, security. In PDP administration, if you can remember vividly, uh, seven, uh, about out of 744, lo seven, 774 local government that we have in Nigeria, mm -hmm. uh, um, about seven local government were captured in Borno. But seven. Did, now yes. compare that seven in Borno to how many we have right now. I mean, given the even, let's talk about the Abuja no, to Kaduna. No, none no, no, of no, 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 all these things is existing. It's again. existing again. No, 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 the no, plateau no, no, state no. killings don't exist. Uh, that the one, Taraba that killings one, and kidnappings. That one, that one the Niger the, state uh, killings. I mean, that's just few whatever. That one. That one is just a politics. It's just what. It's just politics. Okay. And what do you expect from the opposition to do? Just to see that they weigh down the, the, the effort, the effect, uh, the effort of this administration. So, uh, to, to me, I'm not seeing any 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 bad side of uh, the former president and this present administration. They've tried seriously. Okay. If you can remember, in 2000 and uh, before 2015 election, a lot of bomb blasts were exploding in, in, in Abuja here. But now we have banditry and kidnappings and um, lots of. I mean, this one is just is just full of like, just full of new hairs, just hairs men. Uh, do you have proof to show that this is full of new hairs men? Because this, how we are just, it's just a crisis between the farmers and the hairs men. And, the men, and yes. what do you expect for a, somebody who has a road? They've created a, a road map for him to follow, and you went and farm directly on the road. What do you expect? Just like somebody, some, somebody building a house on the road. If a car is coming, definitely has to bash into the house. So that is what is happening. So we don't have any other. If somebody will come uh, come to the air and start saying that uh, we have banditry, we have all these things. To me, I disagree. Seriously, I disagree. What is happening? If you, if you look at uh, Kaduna Express Road, you mentioned made mention of Kaduna Express Road. Nothing is happening again. Uh, the rail station happened during the former President Mamadou Buhari's administration. It's, it was just a setup. It was a setup. It was a setup by who? So it's just for the opposition. For the opposition. Yes, by the opposition. So this you are clearly coming out to say on the national television that the bomb blast that happened the Abuja Kaduna railway station was from the opposition. And what opposition are you talking you about? You see, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about. You see, most of you medias, mm -hmm. you comp uh, you complicate so many issues together. You understand? You see, we are all Nigerians. Okay. We know what is happening in this country. Okay. It is people who want to weigh down the effort of the present administration okay. that are trying to cause some, all this, uh, uh, what, uh, what, 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 what do I even call it? All this crisis, you understand? So, and people are being sponsored. People are, sp are being sponsored to go and, 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 and act unlawfully, which is not good. 
You understand? Mm -hmm. So most of these bomb blasts, uh, bomb blasts that were happening during PDP time, is not happening again. Okay, let me give you an example. Before, before I, before I was allowed to come into this place, I think I would have been checked thoroughly. You understand? But now at least I move freely to down to this place without anybody checking me because they know that the security, the insecurity has at least reduced in some percentage. Out of hundred percent, at least. 80 percent you understand so alhamdulillah we thank god for this uh, president body president but um, former president Muhammad Bawari's administration and it is said at the same administration okay now speaking of the previous administration and because you've laid your antecedents on the past administration correct and a few months before the handover of course of uh, pres former president Muhammad Bawari um asu went on strike and now there's hike in school fees I mean, given the economy of uh, the economy right now of Nigeria, everything is in almost in shambles. Do you think the hike in school fees is actually necessary right now, given the state of the economy of the nation? To me, it's not necessary. So why do we have hike in school fees? I mean, we have people um, protesting everywhere. Definitely in life, mm -hmm. there is what we call change is constant. You understand? Change is constant. So as the economy, the state of the economic is growing, mm -hmm. def is changing. Sorry, is mm -hmm. changing. Okay. Definitely, a lot of things will change. But I think I, I overheard the president saying they are going to reduce the price of school fees, which he has directed all the state governors to do that. Let me give you an example. Like uh, the, gov the governor of uh, Kaduna State, he has reduced the school fees at least by fifty percent. You understand? Okay. So he has reduced some of these school fees by fifty percent. And which I believe so many governors will queue in. So many governors will queue in. And they are coming, inshallah. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. And now let's uh, move to labor strike before we go to the ministerial list. Uh, labor, it's, as um, said, they would go on strike given the 21 days ultimatum they've given the federal government elapsed and they've not gotten, most of the states in Nigeria have not gotten their palliatives. I'd like to get your opinion on that. And do you think going on strike is actually uh, the way forward right now? I mean, shutting down it the economy of a country that is barely or struggling to survive. Do you think that's the way forward? For now, it's not the way forward. Okay. Because for labor to go on strike now, it's not going to affect only the government, but the masses. If truly they are working for the masses, they should have looked for a modality, different modality, to push in this situation, not by going for strike. Strike is never the best, the best way of, of, uh, of resolving issue. For instance, if Labour said, okay, they should shut down all uh, ministries and agencies and banks, whatever, whatever. You see, the masses will be affected. Because most of, if you look at most of this government, they are saying they, should, they are going to close most of it. They are well doing. What of the masses? The, the last two days of strike they went, I, I know somebody who fainted at the, at the cost of no money. Because banks are not Yes, banks were not working. He went to POS to withdraw. They charged him, they, 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 they beat him, and he could not receive the, 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 the cash. Where will he run to go and complain? He has to, he has to, he has to sleep with hunger. The following day, we have to go and rescue him. You understand? Mm -hmm. So if the labor are looking at going, to stri going for strike, mm -hmm. it's very bad. They should look for another way to reconcile with government, and which we believe that this government is working tremendously to see that they fix this economy. I think last week, the Minister of uh, Labor and Employment, mm -hmm. he was saying that by next week, they will release the new national minimum wage uh, amount. So if the labor would at least look for another means of at least resolving this kind of issue, it will be better. It will be better. So they don't, I, don't, I don't think going for strike is, is a solution. I don't think it's a so solution. So what do you think is a solution right now? Yes, already, already they have, the, pres the presidency have formed a committee okay. involving the, the, the labor union. They are members. They are members of this committee. Okay. And they've not even come out to say, okay, this is what we want. This is, this is the amount that, this is the percentage they want, the, the national minimum wage rate that we want. For, for even the government to even start bargaining. If, this, if they have discussed that within the, the committee, but we Nigerians, the common masses, have not had anything. So we believe that for, for the president to use his own acute to involve this 
uh, union into this committee, I think he has done very, very excellently. Okay. This is the first time, uh, the first kind of uh, first time that the government, uh, the presidency, is involving the labor union in bringing uh, bringing out the strategies on how to implement and bring out the new national minimum wage. So I think since the, the unions are involved in this process, I don't think they should they should they should they should they, they, they have another reasons of going for strike again. Okay. To me, I don't see it. I don't see it. It's not. It's not. It's not going to go well. <laughs> well it is we that we still survive. We the farmers. We still so. survive. So for me, I think they should. They should. They should still uh, give the president more time. I more think time. he's going to. He's working on it seriously. Okay. Let's so let's hope the president does something fast about it. Now, I'm uh, speaking of. Uh, you're the secretary of the National Coalition of APC 19 Northern Support Groups, yes. um, the FCT chapter. Can you quickly tell us what that is about? Because I mean, everybody has a coalition of this, coalition of that. Mm. But then I'd like to know what you guys do in general before we get into the ministerial list of um, the APC right now. I think um, in 2015, okay. our able president, Dr. Maina Abdullah Higimba, when he went around 36 states, including FCT, mm -hmm. he mobilized a lot of youth to at least to gain um, a vote okay. for APC. Right. That is for former President Muhammad Buhari. Okay. And uh, Using all this medium, at least we have, it has um, given an insight to the Nigerian youth. Okay. Because he came out publicly to say that this is the party that, that are going to serve as our messiahs. And by God's willing, it has happened. So we go to every nooks and crannies to see that we are enlighten people about this administration. So mm -hmm. that is the work of this uh, uh, coalition. Coalition group. of groups. Yes. So we go to, for, we move from uh, from angle to angle, corner to corner, nooks and crannies everywhere to see that we enlighten people about the good work of this uh, present administration. Present administration. Okay, yes. light in um, enlightening people about um, the current. Of what the current administration is doing, are we looking at um, expecting the minister of youth right now? Do you think that's actually something feasible? Yes, that is why we, the nineteen, uh, the the national coalition of nineteen uh, APC nineteen support group, okay. we have decided to say, okay, we want the federal, the presidents to look at our able able leader, Dr. Abdullah Maina Gimba, for minister of youth. Reasons is this: If you look at the, if you look at the structure of Nigeria, yeah. I think the North has the highest number of youth. You understand? So, and based on democracy, based on democracy, we look at uh, the not the majority. I think carries the vote. You understand? So, him being, if he is given this minister, I think he is going to carry almost everybody along, as far as Nigerian youths are concerned. And we, the 19 Northern Coalitions, I think we have our support for him. And uh, not, only in, not only in the Northern, northern, northern States, okay. even the Southern and the Southeast and Southwest, even South South. He has, a, he has made a lot of people to become who they are today. You understand? Mm -hmm. He has made some, so, so many people to become who they are today. So because in making people who they are today, that you guys are trying to repay him back with loyalty of supporting him to be the minister yes, of youth. Yes. But then, speaking of minister of youth, don't you think the minister of youth should be a young and agile person? He's a young person. How old is he's he? A young person. How old is he? I'm sure he's over 50, correct? He's a young person. He's not up to 50. He's not up to 50. He's not up to 50. Are you sure? Yes. That's the Nigerian age or just the normal age? Normal age. <laughs> normal age. Doctor is, doctor is not up to 50. Okay, all right. Yes, he's not up to 50. And if you look at his actions, he has, he, see, in time, sometimes people do say, like, let me say, like my culture, we do appreciate people from their work. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. if, you do, if you do good, I think you should expect good. You should be expecting good. Among all these groups that fought for the victory of APC, I don't think there is a group that did as we did under the leadership of Dr. Abdullah Maina Gemba. This man has spent, I think, I cannot even vividly analyze how much he has even spent in this movement. He has spent a lot for this movement. You understand? He don't expect the, the party leadership to send him any dime for him to start moving. No! He uses his resources. He has built a lot of men. He, he is a mentor. Among the youth, he is a mentor. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I think 
Dr. Mende Gimba deserved this position. He deserved this position because with him, I believe, is, uh, uh, out of 100%, 95% of Nigerian youth will, will know that, yes, they now have a youth minister. A youth minister. Okay, yes. what, what, what should be our expectation from him as a... Uh, uh, minister of Youth, because of course we know we have the case on ground right now that people want people that are actually young and agile, and then of course there's the faction and all of that. But then you can't speak on behalf of Nigerian youth right now because you can speak for your own faction. You said 19 northern states, if I'm correct. Yes. Now we've not heard from the west, we've not heard from the east. So we would just stick to the northern groups right now and say, okay, yes, the northern, he has the full support of the northern groups. Is there any proof to show that, yes, we have the west and, of course, the east in support? You see, sometimes when you are looking for something, mm -hmm. definitely you have to extend your, your, uh, your good work. And Dr. Mayna Gimba has done tremendously very, very well. Okay. If you are talking of the, the west, Okay. There are a lot of Westerners that have benefited in the movement of this uh, Dr. Maina. Because there are, there are some support groups in the West that I believe he has sponsored them. They do come to him and he gives them at least some penny for them to move. So he has extended his good work, not only in the North. Let me give you an instant. Dr. Mayna Gimba, our expectation, if given this position, Dr. Mayna Gimba has done something that made me to shed tears. Made me to shed tears. There are a lot of crises that has happened within youth, within some communities in FCT here. I think Dr. Mayna Gimba went strictly and settled it without in involving the security agencies. That gives me so joy. And I, at least, he, at least he, gave, he gave that youth almost 20 million naira. Just to settle the crisis within them. He has to go to villages, go to, if, did you, did you, have you seen his, uh, his, his, uh, his visit to, to Soba recently? What happened in Soba? That is under Kaduna State. He has a lot of settled, a lot of things. I know of Fulani groups that, went, met, that went, went to meet him, that their cows were stolen. They don't have anything. This man gave them 10 million naira to go and replace their, their lost cows. So Im imagine all those things that the Tomeno Gimba has been doing. He is not segregating that this man is a Christian, this man is a Muslim, this man is from South, this man is from... No! He has taken Nigerians' youth all together to become... If his, his actions are just dwelling uh, exactly as that of uh, our past presidents, you understand, that does not think of saying I am from the North, the Southerners are not my business. No! Right now, his own aide, his driver, is from South. Mr. Kunle is from South. Go to his house, his cooks. Most of them, they are, they are Igbos. Most of his cooks, they are Igbos. Most of his closest associates, too, they are not even, most of them are not. See, it's just few that are even the Northern. But go and see what he's doing. I think him being the, if given the position of uh, Minister of Youth, I think youth would, would smile. <laughs> yes, All right, apart right. from um, um, youth, some um, youth um, going to meet him and of course sharing money, I'd like to know about his antecedents. I'm sure our viewers are, of course, curious. Speaking of antecedents, um, has he done, has he, owned, uh, has he been in any public office before? Does he have any antecedents related or affiliated with the youth apart from, of course, the communities? Yes. Okay. You see, Dr. Mena Gimba is a, is, a, is a national chairman of Ariwa Youth. Is a national chairman of Ariwa Youth. That is why most of his activities is well known mm -hmm. all over the north. All over the north. And that is why I gave you an instant. Even in Niger State, he has been going to so many places to settle crisis. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. And he has sponsored a lot of students outside and inside. He has, he has sponsored a lot of orphans. You understand? Right from primary school, secondary school down to high institution and he has made opportunity for so many youth to have sense of belongings he has opened yeah, at least i think in the in 2000 and 2018 he has empowered almost 178 youth by giving them three three hundred thousand naira cash three three hundred thousand naira cash for them to, uh, to be self-reliance 
no, no youth, nobody will go to Dr. Maina and say, this is what I want. That will, you, will not support, you will not be supportive. If he doesn't have, he will make sure that he get, he try by all means, he get away for you. Okay, as we wrap up, um, of course, you know, uh, being an independent body is different from being a minister. Now, yes. we get into, um, of course, him being a minister, of course, there's going to be the shadow, the security and everything. Do you think it's still going to be accessible? That man, the way that he man is, I as know. a personal man. That man? man, I know. That man, that man, Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Mina Gimba. The, forget about the number of security that will be. That man has passion for, 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 for youth. Okay. I don't think those ones will become a, they will be a barrier to him, to his, to, to his uh, and, and, uh, uh, actions. Let me say his work. Okay. Security, they are just meant to escort him and to, but other activities that he's going to do, they will not interfere. He is the minister. You want to, you, you remember, he's, the, he's going to be the minister. <laughs> Has it that's not been confirmed? <laughs> inshallah, inshallah, is going to. It's going to. Inshallah. <laughs> okay, yes, all right. We hope in God. Okay, yes. all right. Thank you, Honorable Barawi Yasu Gamani. Thank you for joining us on the program this afternoon. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, I'm sure our viewers have learned one or two things from you, and it would be nice to have um, the Honorable himself, of course, join us on the program one or one of these days, probably next year. Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, all right. All right, thank you, voice at home. Thank you for staying with us on the policy today. This is where we wrap it up for today. Thank you for staying tuned. I remain Miss Babadidi. See you same time, same station tomorrow. Bye.